I'm Elisa Pasquale and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in REB. I'm Carrie Kitahara. I'm a senior investigator in REB. Perfect. Okay. See it. Go. Yeah. The radiation epidemiology branch is really unique. It's a, a group of researchers who have unique expertise in the biological effects of radiation exposure. We study environmental, medical, occupational sources of radiation and their influence on risk of cancer and other chronic diseases. The radiation epidemiology branch is really well known in the field. And a lot of high impact publications come out from this place. Some of the major findings that have come from the branch include a large occupational cohort study called the US Radiologic Technologist Cohort, which has individual level dosimetry information and long term follow up for cancer incidents among radiologic technologists. And we have large cohort studies that help to address the late effects of radioactive fallout, like the Chernobyl accident. And the Japanese atomic bomb survivor study happens to be the gold standard study in terms of our understanding of radiation exposure and cancer because the dosimetry is really state of the art. And we have a number of different resources that look at the long-term health effects of different types of medical procedures, diagnostic and therapeutic. The major project I worked during my first year as a postdoc here was on the risk of cancer after the use of radioactive iodine in thyroid cancer patients. More of them are being treated with radioactive iodine than not. We found that individuals who were treated with radioactive iodine therapy, especially at higher doses, had increased risk of death due to solid cancers, including breast cancer. We had a large data set of uh, more than 18,000 patients treated with this therapy and up to seven decades of follow-up after treatment. Oh wow, that's yeah. really interesting. More than 20 years after treatment, you have much stronger association for those younger patients. Your study focused on younger patients, patients mm -hmm. diagnosed before the age of 45, and we focused on the younger patients because we know from radiation epidemiologic studies that younger individuals are more susceptible to the late effects of radiation exposure than older individuals. So your main results are? And what we found was that in the long term, there is an increased risk of uh, also solid cancer, like breast cancer, for example, or salivary gland cancer associated with the use of radioactive iodine. Our results were really of interest for the clinical community. Actually, they were published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, which uh, is one of the uh, most high-impact journals in the field of clinical oncology. There is uh, a real support in uh, helping you, not only on the project that I am conducting with her, but also in uh, thinking about my next steps. DCEG is a very collegial environment, very supportive for individuals at all different stages of their career. So I've been here for 16 years. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I, I just couldn't imagine working anywhere else. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health. National Cancer Institute. Cancer.gov. 1-800-4-CANCER.